Now we're going to go uh, through a little game. And it's very simple. I'm going to ask you uh, to choose between two things that you have found the, the most difficult when it comes to the innovation process. And we all know that developing product is one thing. The other thing is to find the market and to really think about the customer orientation, etc. So which one is the hardest? Is it the technology or is it the market? Kari. Market. Anna. Market. 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 And market. And market. Wow. <laughs> Wasn't that? That was quite a, quite a you know, astounding answer. What, does it mean that product development was very easy? Uh, <laughs> uh, in our case, we are using a dry digester, which is a quite new technology in Finland and especially on a farm scale. But I still see that there are also other possibilities that with what kind of technology to use when uh, producing biogas, for example. But uh, there's always a question about the, the money, how to get the income and if there is a demand for the energy you are producing. And when you are working in a small scale and on crop farms, it means that there is no energy demand on the farms, but then the amount of energy produced is quite small, and so where to sell it? But maybe I can ask uh, Yare, mm. you, you were part of developing the easy mining and I think that uh, developing the product, that's, you have to meet with a number of standards, isn't it, as well? And the technical requirements, that couldn't have been so easy. Yeah, uh, I, I said that the market is important and I still think mm -hmm. that it is important. And uh, in my view, uh, you need to recover nutrients in a commercial form that you can use the existing market today to give the farmers the products that they are used to with high availability and high uh, effectivity. So, so what's actually happening is the way I choose to see the technology is it's we try to clean the phosphorus from a place where it's a pollutant, so it's causing algal bloom, and we want to bring it back to a place where it can be used as a fertilizer. So essentially what we are doing is we are, we are transporting the phosphorus from a source of pollution to a source of nutrients. So, and what we are doing is we are building a transporter. So that's, that's the technology that we are using. So we use an adsorbent, an iron oxide based adsorbent, and the challenge is, it's, it's like every day when you travel, when you transport yourself, you use a car, for instance. So you want to use a car that transports you very fast, you know, can, is luxurious, is comfortable. But at the end of the day, you want to use something that has a high lifetime, that you can keep using again and again. And that's essentially what we do. We put it in a resin, so it's got a really high lifetime, and we can reuse the technology. Yes, phosphorus is a nutrient, and uh, but the way we want to look at it is not address it at the Baltic Sea, but before it reaches the Baltic Sea. So that's, that's how we want to look at it. And uh, one thing to add on is we are working with very dilute streams. We are looking at extremely low concentrations of phosphorus. So the drive is rather to prevent algal bloom. So that's got to be very clear. So let's think about the bigger, si bigger picture and the systems and so on. Um, if I will ask you another quick question. If you think about your innovation, would you label it as symbiotic, basically that you know, others will also gain always, or will there also be losers? So I will ask you to, to label your innovation, whether it's symbiotic or if it's disruptive. So what, what would you say, Kari? Symbiotic. symbiotic. Of course, symbiotic. 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 Free symbiotic. On this side? Symbiotic. Symbiotic. Yes, symbiotic. Symbiotic. And yes. On the other hand, <clears throat> we also know that to make the bigger picture different, to make our systems work in a di different way, we also need to be 
you know, radically changing some of the dominant technologies. At least that's what I've been hearing, that, you know, we need to have changes in terms of how, of land use, in terms of maybe how we treat sewage, etc. So is there something in your own innovation that can really bring about this big transformation that, you know, really changes it? And is it going to happen through legislation? Or do you think it's going to happen through consumer-driven forces like so I don't know, maybe we should start from this side, because on this, with Kalumbori, we have a, such a wonderful example of a transformed society where, you know, you are doing things differently. So how did that even start? Well, Kalumbori Symbiosis has been running for more than 50 years now. So it's something that has evolved organically over time. Uh, always, because it's, it's companies, it's private companies, a lot of them. Uh, and of course they have the business case in mind. So uh, a certain stream, a business agreement will not happen if it's not mutually beneficial and if it's not financially feasible. Of course legislation can come in and assist this, making the alternative non-feasible, uh, thereby making the symbiotic thing the, the better choice. We have heard now several examples of how you have to work maybe in a smaller setting with actors, creating trust. And I think this is well known from the literature as well, that if you want to create a new niche within, you know, within a socio-technical larger system, you have to start creating smaller networks, etc. But the step after that is more difficult, of course, to move out from the local setting. So how do we get there so that we have, I mean, whether it's the, the Hurle model with, with your technology, or if it's the AES, or if it's the Kalumbori example, how do we take it to the next level so someone can do the same thing in another place? Maybe, Anna, would you... Because now everyone is coming to you and looking at what you have been doing and thinking, how could I take this back home? So is there, is there something we could do to facilitate the transfer of the model, not necessarily by always, you know, having the same actors. Yeah, the, that is a challenger because uh, as we have a lot of questions, we, we really have to, to uh, try to be everywhere now. And that's uh, hard because you, you just have your hours and you still want to have time to uh, continue your product uh, development uh, at, uh, at the test beds and uh, do all, all those uh, technical uh, work as well. So uh, in our case, we, we have been so lucky, so we have been using our guests. Uh, so uh, now we have uh, around uh, 10 uh, uh, certified agents, as we call them, who has been uh, coming to us and uh, uh, taking a part of, of our visits and then coming back to us and saying, hello, we are interested to go on with this in, in our country and uh, in our networks. So uh, they are, are like helping us to, to, uh, to build um, business mm. uh, in their networks. What aspects of the market introduction has been the most difficult? Was that the question? Yes. yes. Um, just to make it a bit clearer, it's, it's a bit like when, when you have innovations, you, you did point out that sometimes they're not always symbiotic, sometimes they're destructive. Okay, that there is a bit of both in reality, I must say. Uh, the challenges for innovators who really have exciting ideas, they are pushing the existing boundaries. So sort of they have become the early players, right? So, so in this case, we, we in, uh, with the case of AquaCare, we are uh, targeting extremely low levels of phosphorus. And this is, this is still an early phase when it comes to large scale application. So uh, technically it's feasible. But how much are stakeholders willing to play? They, they have no benchmark as to how much they are willing to pay. So that's that's really that's where the legislations need to kick in. You know where they really make this a requirement, which I think will happen in some time. But that's the challenge: being early players. In any case, there is no real benchmark, and then you really have to play with the benchmark. So that, that that's the challenge I see. I learned a lot about uh, the topic today earlier as well while I was discussing it with him. And it was interesting to see the challenges people face when they want to reuse 
uh, waste, you know. So, and one of the conclusions which we will also point out is it should be independent of the source, but we should have similar standards. It should be based on the quality of the material and not that it's based on the waste, so it cannot be used. So, for me, that part was very interesting. Now, uh, so your case might be a bit special because in other places we don't have well-developed markets. I think maybe, Per, you want to comment on that. Where are we really when it comes to the market development of, of phosphorus, for instance, from, from these products? But I would like to say that we are in the same situation. When you create a symbiosis, the most important thing is trust. It's not legislation. But I when you're going to scale it up, when you're going to do it in a large scale, you need legislation. But in order to create that, you need to create an awareness that there is a possibility on the market. And uh, that was the focus for us the last two years, to, to make sure that politicians, policymakers understand that there is a possibility. So uh, you need to have trust in order to create the movement to change. And hopefully after that, legislation can come in place as a next step, I believe. And trust builds on knowledge and interaction, or how what would you say? Knowledge is important, but also to understand that each player understand that they are a part of changing and understand that they become each of them needs to become heroes then they will help you so if you try to win by yourself you will definitely lose a circular economy is about collaboration so collaboration is the key where going forward